Welcome to Wild Developments. I'm your guide, Lauren, and we have a very special episode for you today. We are celebrating six months of developing something wild. Cheers to so many more adventures. Keep tuning in every Thursday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the latest episode. We have an excellent lineup for you for the rest of the year, from artists to adventurers, biologists, entrepreneurs, and so much more. Everyone has a unique way of connecting with nature, so let's hear yours. Go to the show notes and click in the link to submit your story or be a guest. As of June 5th, 2024, we have 22 published interviews where I have talked to people from all walks of life. At the end of each show, I ask them what tip they have for someone who would like to connect or reconnect with nature. After reviewing everyone's responses, the overarching theme across the board is the importance of intentional and mindful engagement with nature. There are also some commonalities amongst all the advice. It was revealed that there are 10 practical tips for connecting with nature. Here are the 10 common tips for connecting with nature gathered from their advice. Stick around after the 10 tips to hear all 22 responses in the order of their air date. If you'd prefer to watch, head on over to YouTube for my channel at Wild Development Studio. Tip number one, intentional immersion. Throughout 22 interviews, when asked how to connect with nature, frequently the guests would say, just do it. If you wanna connect with nature or do anything, you have to be intentional about it. Show up with an open mind and be present. Allow nature to impact your mental and emotional well-being positively. Everyone can find a way to connect with nature, regardless of their starting point or level of experience. That's why podcasts like Wild Developments even exist, to help show people a wide variety of ways to connect with nature, giving you some ideas to experiment and play around with. And hopefully, you'll find one that you fall in love with and want to utilize regularly in order to connect with nature. But the first step is to set out to do so, intentionally. Tip number two, make it a daily routine. To maintain regular contact with the natural world, make nature a part of your daily habit, similar to other activities like going to the gym or even brushing your teeth. You might even have to schedule it in your calendar if you have to, but just make time every day. Tip number three, utilize local spots. Nature is all around us and it can be enjoyed in a variety of ways. To connect with nature regularly, utilize nearby parks, community gardens, or even cemeteries as a place to connect with nature. Accessibility makes it easier to incorporate nature into your daily routine, and it can be as simple as looking out your window, sitting in your lawn, or even looking at weeds sprouting from a sidewalk. When traveling, choose vacation spots that offer natural attractions like national parks, beaches, mountains, or forests when possible. Tip number four, appreciate simple acts. Recognize that connecting with nature doesn't require grand gestures. To foster a deep appreciation for nature, appreciate the beauty in the simple natural phenomena that's all around you, like a sunrise or a sunset, the sound of the wind, feeling the rain on your skin, watching an ant colony, or even just looking at a blade of grass. These simple acts can profoundly connect you to nature. Tip number five, minimize distractions. Unplug from digital devices to be fully present and experience nature without interruptions. You don't necessarily have to turn your phone off, but if you're uncomfortable with that, you can put your phone in do not disturb mode and set a timer for how long you would like to intentionally connect with nature uninterrupted. Tip number six, sit quietly and observe. Spend time just sitting quietly in nature. Observe and notice the small details around you. Allow nature to reveal itself by just sitting still and observing the surroundings. You'll be surprised by how much wildlife comes out when we're just silent. Tip number seven, practice mindfulness. Engage in grounding practices like standing barefoot or sit by a stream to enhance the sense of connection, presence, and being in the moment. Engage your senses. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you smell? What do you hear? By engaging your senses, you connect to nature and provide mental clarity. Allow nature to be a space for mental reflection and healing. Face internal battles and meet them with kindness, as nature can be a therapeutic backdrop for personal growth. Tip number eight, physical activities. Outdoor activities like walking, hiking, or gardening are common ways to connect with nature. They combine physical exercise with natural immersion. 
These activities connect you to the outdoors and promote a physical sense of well-being. Explore other outdoor activities like kayaking, fishing, or camping. The lists are endless. All these provide diverse experiences and a deeper connection with different natural environments. Tip number nine, prioritize safety. Be prepared and cautious to ensure a safe and enjoyable experience, especially in remote areas. Consider going with a friend or a group and ensure you have the necessary gear and knowledge for the environment that you're exploring. Always tell someone who is staying behind and not exploring where you are, where you are going, and when you plan to be back. Also consider packing a first aid kit and essentials needed for the amount of time anticipated outside. There are a lot of great resources online to walk you through what you need, or even an outdoor recreation store to guide you. Tip number 10, embrace all seasons. Interact with nature in all weather conditions and seasons. Each offer unique experiences and perspectives. Remember to dress and pack appropriately for the weather. Hats, gloves, jackets, sunscreen, proper footwear, and water will help you keep safe and comfortable in the elements. Journaling can be a great way to notice natural changes throughout the seasons. There you have it, 10 tips to connect with nature. Intention, making it a daily routine, visit local nature spots, appreciate simple acts, minimize distractions, sit quietly and observe, practice mindfulness, do physical activities outside when you can, prioritize safety and embrace all seasons. These tips highlight that connecting with nature can be as simple as making an effort to step outside and be present. And it can be as profound as engaging in regular, mindful activities that foster a deeper appreciation and connection to the natural world. Warning, participating in these tips can provide positive mental, emotional, and physical benefits to your life. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the 22 clips from the first six months of Wild Developments podcast. Until next time, get outside and see what develops. Well, if you don't have a lot of time, one, one simple thing is to go outside and sit in nature and sit quietly. Because nature, when, you, when a person comes in and they don't know whether you're a prey or a predator, what happens is everything quiets down. But if you go and sit and then wait they start, nature starts showing up again. So something beautiful happens and you just start noticing the birds that are flying overhead and the, so, and the noise that the squirrel makes or the wind blowing through the trees that's absolutely necessary to grow strong stalks. So, you know, you begin to see how things connect. So that would be one. And I think I found my passion for nature in two places, one in walking, taking a walk, um, and the second is I like to garden, and so putting my hands in the soil is uh, very much of a simple reconnection. Learn to enjoy the outdoors. Be safe out there, though. You know, always be safe. The you know you, you can't take it too lightly because there it can be dangerous if you don't take some precautions but get out there enjoy the outdoors enjoy nature and you know it's very soul satisfying and it, you know it's never too late to start as we were going over to the island which is basically where we we're going to set up and, and i was going to teach them halfway there i was looking over at one angle this way and it was beautiful scenery with just the water we had the different islands over there and the land over here and the clouds were kind of in a little bit but it just had this, you thought you were in your Arctic almost. It was really bluish. I just happened to pick my camera up and got it to the right settings and took one or two shots. And I looked at it, I said, okay, I picked my head up and I'm looking around and I just happened to look the other way. And it was funny because it was a total contrast. By looking over this way, now it was almost like you were in the South. The sun was setting and it was nice orangey yellow skies, almost like on fire type of thing. And then... And you would have thought that this was a total different time of year and a different landscape altogether. And so I picked up the camera, I turned over and again, boom, 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 took a bunch of shots off. Get out and do it every day. Even, even in an urban environment, there's no excuse for go not going to a park, going for a walk, uh, make it a priority. I think everything, it's like going to the gym. We can have everything else get in the way and then say at the end of the day, I'll go tomorrow. 
but it doesn't work. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it, it's much better to make it a priority and just go, even if it's walking down to a store to get your morning coffee. It's at least it's getting outside and enjoying the day and the sunrise or the wind in your face or whatever it may be. When you make it a priority, you feel better about yourself and therefore you can give your best self to other people. You know, almost anywhere in the world you can find a park or a beach or a forest. In the United States, you can get a pass for the national parks. Go go to your go to your national parks and your state parks and uh, or just like your community park, you know, and walk around and breathe, sit down and breathe, you know, big breath. Oh, just like open your eyes and look at everything. Look at the knots and the trees and the flowers and, you know, this, if there's a stream, that's really good to sit by, down by a stream and just listen to the water flowing. Um, you know, that's really really good. And I think that it doesn't have to be overthought. Everyone can get out into nature. There's, you know, most people do live somewhere near at least a park and, you know, make it part of your habits and do it as often as you can, even on vacations, you know, go, go to as many natural uh, things as you can visit volcanoes, visit waterfalls, visit parks and beaches and uh, mountains and trails, you know, I do a little hiking. And my one thing about hiking is get shoe, really good shoes, you know, uh, with a lot of tread. But that particular morning, it was just cold, no snow yet. And I got my coffee and I went out on this little beach and I was just observing the river. And I was having just the most serene moment. And I had been out walking in this area just exploring all through the woods and this this beach area before I realized that I looked up and that's always a gift. Don't forget to look up. Sometimes you get so focused on what's ahead of you or what's in front of you or the trail that you forget to lift your eyes to the sun and to the to the beautiful things that are above you. And I look up and there were the waterfalls right in front of me. And I was absolutely in awe that I had been on this trail and I had been walking for an hour and it wasn't until the sun came up and I peeked through and I saw through the trees that there is the most amazing waterfall. I've been hiking where all of a sudden there are three bears on the trail. Now, I don't want to be hiking alone by myself when 40 feet away are three bears. My advice for someone who wants to get into it is find a pal and do it with do it with someone else responsibly. I would say, I mean, obviously I have to do the cemetery side of it. Cemeteries <laughs> are, yeah, America's first public parks. And so find a public cemetery near you. You can even research the trees that are at it and do a nature walk through it. Um, there's such peaceful places. There's there's so much. I could feel like I could start a whole TikTok channel about trees that grow in cemeteries. Uh, there's, yeah, it's just, they're the most beautiful spaces and they're cultivated for people to come and enjoy them and like, just be in that space. Just keep kindness in mind. Kindness goes a long way with, with animals, with trees, with, you know, everything that's in, in nature. So just be kind. Do it as soon as possible. (laughs) If, if you're not accustomed to doing that, don't, underestimate the power of it. I mean, most of us have been in nature at some point or another, but I mean, really and truly don't underestimate the power of going out, making it a point to go out and be in nature as as often as you possibly can and bringing it to you as much as you can into your yard or your plants in your house, whatever. If you have cats, make sure they're not toxic to your cats because a lot of them are or dogs. It just boils down to be as simple as that. I know we get busy. We get caught up in the moments. I'm guilty of the same thing. I always feel better when I make it a point to take it seriously and and just get out there and do it as much as I can. Take your shoes off. Go out barefoot. And who cares if you get dirty? Who cares if you get muddy or anything? Go just stand even. Go stand. Go sit. 
And if you sit silent enough, you're going to hear, you'll hear everything about nature. Go outside, get free. Just decide, make the decision, stand up, put on what you got to put on, open the door, go out and move. Do it. Well, it's easy for me to say, but go to Antarctica. It, it was such, like I said, you, you know, you're off the grid. You're in this pristine environment. You feel like, you know, you don't see another man-made object. You don't see telephone poles and towers and, you know, buildings or anything, you know, un unless you look back at the ship from shore or something. Getting that far off the grid is great. Now, you don't have to go to the bottom of the world to do that but you know just walking out your own back door or getting to the local park nearby you know getting off the beaten path and into nature is is always fun that's where we came from so how could it not be a good thing so sometimes it's just as simple as walking the dog with my husband when he says hey do you want to walk the dog I say yes instead of no <laughs> even though it's kind of cold outside and even though it means I have to put on the extra layer just getting outside and having the fresh air. And sometimes it just means opening my front door in the morning and just standing there with the fresh air. You know, it can be as little as that. Just that much outdoorness can, can drastically change my day. I would say, honestly, it really depends a lot on where you're starting from and how much you're already connecting with nature. But if this is something that's new for you, I mean, looking at a blade of grass is connecting with nature. Taking a breath of fresh air, looking up at the clouds is connecting with nature. So taking any moment that you can, especially if it's in your stressful, busy day, right, where you can stop and look up at the branches of a tree and feeling that sense of awe that there are things that are bigger than me. I am not the biggest thing in the world. It can bring a real sense of peace and groundedness and, and that sense of wonder of there really is so much beauty in the world get out there. I mean, the just, just do it, just get out there. So I think there's nature all around us, wherever we live, there are natural places, you know, throw a tent in the back of your car and go car camping, park at some trailhead and take a hike, uh, depending on your ability and what you can do, find a friend and then go out and backpack, jump in a kayak, hit a river, whatever you're into, go fishing, but just getting out there. And I, I would add one little thing to it. Um, turn off the phone. You might want to bring it for safety, but just turn it off, throw it in your backpack and forget about it. So you're not distracted. So you're out there in the moment, really experiencing nature. Even, even a three hour walk with the phone off is amazing. I, I, I can't stress this enough, just how important it is to disconnect and then walk out there into nature and reconnect with ourselves. Don't give up. Don't give up. When your mind tells you to give up, when you start to have those conversations with yourself that you don't necessarily want to have, don't back off, don't run away. Be a friend to it. That's the biggest thing I've learned about my own experience. A lot of why we had to be in that outdoor community is I needed that healing space while I was raising my daughters. And when you're out there, and even if you're not by yourself, even if you're with a group, there's those glimpses of moments where you might hate yourself or you might doubt yourself and you start to go with that internal battle. Let that internal battle happen. Meet it with kindness and meet it with acceptance. And, and I always tell people, tell that voice that everything's okay, that everything's Everything's fine and you're in a safe place. So don't give up. When that when that moment hits you, when that spot hits you, that's the place of healing. That's that's the place you need to be. And when you start working through that and you learn to befriend yourself, that's that's where you want to be at. I mean, wh what do you do when you have COVID or what do you do if you got polio or pneumonia? Just find a window and look out. And I'm doing a lot now with these elder people I'm walking with. Look at the sky. Figure out, are the clouds? What's the color of the sky? Where is the sun? Uh, are we getting more daylight, less daylight? Is it raining? Ask questions about the sky. And then the other thing that we're noticing now is that the uh, buds are swelling on the trees. Just start looking at that stuff. Now, that's easy to write down. And that is all part of your date, place, time, weather. So have a blank piece of paper, write down the date. 
and just write down five things of nature you're noticing because it'll be different in December. Yeah. It's always, I mean, if you want to go into the Buddhist way, which I am a, a precept follower of, everything is changing. Just do it. We get, life gets in the way. It, it really does. And sometimes you're so exhausted. That's my dog in the background. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes you're so exhausted. You're like, I just, I just need to sit down and chill, but I have to remind myself, just do it because every time you get out into nature, it's one of my, I love being outside. It's my favorite place in the world. I get rejuvenated by it. I love looking around and listening to the birds and the the leaves and the, it's just, just do it. It's going to make your soul so much better. You're going to be so happy. And so are your fur baby. Just go into nature that appeals to you. If you love the ocean, the mountains, whatever it is in nature that you like, don't wait another second. Just get out there and immerse yourself in it. You will find peace and you will find healing. Be open. Be aware. Be aware. Show up. First thing you have to do is show up. First thing I have to do is show up. Be intentional. Things might happen here that I'm not expecting. And I want to be open to that. I don't want my preconceptions to cloud, cloud the weather. I don't <laughs> want to be able to, to see it, you know? So just be open, be aware, and show up for the experience. Well, I think it is rather quite easy because, you know, even if you live in a in a city or, well, even better if you live somewhere in the countryside, but, you know, every time you go outside, you know, rather than taking the car, because I know that's a U.S. American thing, maybe go for a stroll or take your bike or take your dog for a nice long walk and just like look around, look at the green spaces, try to see what's still there, right? And, and, and just appreciate because i think sometimes we live so fast um and even in your own backyard you know the flowers the trees the birds whatever is there i think there's so many things and ask questions thanks for joining wild development studio we hope this exploration into the world of wildlife arts and adventure has sparked a desire to get outside and connect with something wild if you have an adventure that's awe-inspiring, don't hesitate to share. Click the link in the description to submit your story to have it featured on our show or be a guest. Until next time, keep connecting to the wild and see what develops. The views, opinions, and statements expressed by individuals during Wild Development Studio productions do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Wild Development Studio or its affiliates. Participation in any activities, expeditions, or adventures discussed or promoted during our content may involve inherent risks. It is strongly advised that individuals conduct thorough research, seek professional guidance, and take all necessary precautions before engaging in any such activities. Wild Development Studio, its representatives, or employees shall not be held responsible for any injury, loss, damage, accident, or unforeseen incident that may occur as a result of participating in activities inspired by or discussed in our content. By choosing to engage with our content or act upon any information provided, individuals do so at their own risk and discretion. Tip number four, appreciate simple acts. Recognize that connecting with nature doesn't require grand gestures. To foster a deeper appreciation for nature, recognize the beauty in simple natural phenomena, like a sunrise or sunset, the sound of the wind, feeling the rain on your skin, watching an ant colony, or my cat walking across my keyboard right now.